The room enveloped us in an uncomfortable silence, broken only by the rhythmic ticking of the old clock on the wall. My husband, Adrian, whom I had spent 29 years with, sat across from me, his eyes glued to the TV, as usual, ignoring my presence. Lost in my thoughts, I felt the weight of years of unspoken grievances and suppressed anger. I had reached my limit. Did you finish moving? Adrian's voice edged with his usual condescension, pierced the silence. I didn't look at him as I replied, I'm leaving, Adrian. My voice remained calm, but inside. A storm was raging. Adrian scoffed. Oh, really? And where will you go, Ava? You can't survive without me. His words stung, but they also fueled my resolve. For too long, I had endured his dismissive attitude and his mother's incessant meddling. It was time to reclaim my life. I'll manage, I said, standing up. I felt empowered despite the fear and uncertainty that lay ahead. His mother, who had been living with us for the past year, walked in, her eyes narrowing as she saw my packed bags. Running away, are we? She sneered. I knew you didn't have the spine to handle this family. Ignoring her, I grabbed my bags and headed towards the door. Andrian didn't move to stop me. Instead, he called out, you'll be back, you need us. As I stepped out of the house, I felt a sense of liberation. The cool evening breeze felt like a balm to my suffocated soul. I didn't know where I was going, but for the first time in years, I felt a glimmer of hope. For 29 years, I had played the dutiful wife to Adrian, a man who saw me more as a convenience than a partner. Our son, Jack, was the only light in my life, but even he couldn't fill the growing void in my heart. Adrian's mother, with her constant criticisms and manipulations, only added to the toxicity of our home. I found a small apartment, modest but peaceful. It was my sanctuary, a place where I could breathe and think without judgment. In the following days, I ignored the barrage of calls and messages from Adrian and his mother. They fluctuated between pleading and threats, but I was done listening. My coworkers at the library, where I had worked part-time for years, were supportive. They had seen the changes in me, the gradual loss of my spirit. Now they witnessed my rebirth. One evening, as I was settling into my new routine, my phone rang. It was Jack. Mom, are you okay? His voice was laced with concern. I am, Jack. Better than I've been in years, I replied, my voice steady. I'm proud of you, Mom. Dad and Grandma, they're not taking it well. Dad's been drinking, and Grandma won't stop talking about how you've abandoned them. A pain of guilt hit me, but I pushed it away. They'll manage Jack. They need to learn to respect others. Jack was silent for a moment. I'm glad you're finally thinking about yourself, Mom. Let me know if you need anything. As I hung up the phone, I realized this was just the beginning. Adrian and his mother had underestimated me for years. It was time to show them that I was no longer the woman they thought they could control. My journey of self-discovery and revenge had just begun. In my small apartment, surrounded by the few belongings I had taken with me, I reflected on the past 29 years with Adrian. Our marriage, once filled with promise, had slowly disintegrated into a shadow of what it could have been. It all started blissfully. Adrian was charming and attentive, and we were young and full of dreams. But as the years passed, the charm faded, revealing a man more interested in his own needs than those of his family. When Jack was born, I thought it would bring us closer, but it only highlighted our differences. Adrian's idea of parenting was providing financially, leaving the emotional nurturing to me. His mother, Elizabeth, always hovered in the background, her criticism of my parenting a constant drone. Ava, you're coddling the boy too much, Elizabeth would say. Adrian never needed all this fuss. I endured her jibes, focusing on Jack, who grew up to be a thoughtful and independent young man. Despite the tension at home, the turning point came when Elizabeth moved in with us. Adrian didn't even discuss it with me. One day, I returned home to find her bags in the hallway. My house is too lonely, she had said, a manipulative glint in her eye. Living with Elizabeth was suffocating. She criticized everything, from my cooking to the way I dressed. Adrian could have done so much better, she would often say within my earshot. But what truly broke me was discovering Andrian's betrayal. I stumbled upon bank statements revealing large withdrawals from our joint account, funding Elizabeth's gambling habit and Adrian's secret indulgences. Confronting them led to heated arguments, with Adrian always siding with his mother. She's my mother, Ava. She needs this to cope with her loneliness. He would argue, dismissive of my concerns. The final straw came when I overheard a conversation between them plotting to take control of the finances completely reducing me to nothing but an occupant in their house. I knew then that I couldn't live in that shadow any longer. 
The day I left, I promised myself that they would one day understand the pain they had caused. My plan was simple yet effective. I would hit them where it hurt the most, their pride and their finances. I started by legally separating our finances, a move that shocked Adrian. What do you think you're doing? He yelled over the phone. Protecting myself, something I should have done years ago. I replied, my voice calm but firm. Elizabeth's reaction was even more dramatic. You ungrateful wretch. After everything we've done for you. She screeched when she found out. But I was unmoved. The years of submission were over. I was playing by my own rules now. And this was just the beginning of their karma. The weeks following my financial independence were tumultuous. Adrian and Elizabeth were furious, their true natures fully exposed in their anger. I received countless calls, each more venomous than the last. You think you're clever, Eva? Adrian hissed during one call. You're nothing without me. You'll come crawling back. I won't, Adrian. I'm done being your puppet, I replied, my newfound strength bolstering my words. Elizabeth was even more vitriolic. You'll regret this, Eva. You've ruined our family. There was no family to ruin, Elizabeth. It was an illusion I shot back. Despite their threats, I felt liberated. The fear that once controlled me had evaporated, replaced by a resolute desire for justice. It was time for them to face the consequences of their actions. I started by reaching out to old friends and acquaintances and sharing my story. The truth about Adrian and Elizabeth's manipulations and financial deceit quickly spread, tarnishing their reputations. Adrian, who prided himself on his social standing, was appalled. How could you do this to me? He demanded during a rare face-to-face -face encounter. You did this to yourself, I replied calmly. I'm just shedding light on it. Elizabeth, faced with the community's judgment, was equally distraught. You've turned everyone against us. This is war, Ava. But I was no longer intimidated by her. No, Elizabeth, this is justice, I replied. I watched as their world crumbled. Adrian's friends began to distance themselves, weary of his tarnished image. Elizabeth's social circle, once a source of her pride, dwindled as the truth about her gambling and manipulation spread. But I didn't stop there. I knew their financial instability was their weakest point. With the help of a lawyer, I began the process of claiming my share of our joint assets, ensuring that Elizabeth's gambling debts were exposed and Adrian's mismanagement of our finances was brought to light. The court proceedings were grueling, but I stood my ground. Adrian and Elizabeth's attempts to discredit me fell flat. Their lies and deceit were no match for the truth. The judge ruled in my favor, granting me a significant portion of our assets. I saw the defeat in Adrian and Elizabeth's eyes. It was more than just a legal victory. It was a moral one. You've destroyed us, Ava, Adrian said, a shadow of his former arrogant self. No, Adrian, you destroyed us long ago. I'm just picking up the pieces, I replied, walking out of the courtroom. For the first time in years, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. I looked forward to the future, free from the chains of my past. Adrian and Elizabeth's downfall was the first step in my journey of reclaiming my life, and I was ready for whatever came next. The aftermath of the court ruling was a whirlwind. With my rightful share of the assets, I began building a life free from Adrian and Elizabeth's shadow. Their reactions, however, were a mixture of disbelief and fury. You can't took us to us, Ava. Adrian exclaimed over the phone one evening, his voice laced with desperation. I've done nothing but take back what's mine, I replied firmly. You should have thought about the consequences before you betrayed me. Elizabeth's response was more underhanded. She tried to rally family members against me, painting herself as a victim. But her attempts were futile. Ava, you're tearing this family apart, she accused during a chance encounter at the grocery store. This family was broken long before I left. I countered, not giving her the satisfaction of seeing me upset. I relished the freedom of living on my own terms. I changed my phone number, cutting off their direct line of harassment. I also started volunteering at a local shelter, finding solace in helping others who had faced similar struggles but my quest for justice wasn't over. I discovered that Elizabeth was planning to contest the court's decision, still clinging to the hope of reclaiming money for her gambling habits. You won't get away with this, Ava. I'll make sure of it, she threatened in a message relayed through a relative. In response, I fortified my legal defenses, prepared to counter any move she made. I was no longer the woman who shied away from confrontation. I was a fighter standing up for what was rightfully mine. Meanwhile, Adrian was crumbling under the pressure. His once pristine image was now tarnished, and his career suffered as a result. 
The friends and connections valued so much were now distancing themselves, unwilling to associate with a man caught in scandal. You've ruined me, Ava, he lamented during a rare moment of reflection. You ruined yourself, Adrian. I just exposed the truth. As the weeks turned into months, I watched as their once secure world disintegrated. Elizabeth's attempt to contest the court's decision failed miserably, leaving her financially and socially bankrupt. Adrian's career continued its downward spiral, his reputation irreparably damaged. But despite their downfall, I felt no joy in their suffering. It was a necessary step in my journey, but it was not the end. I had reclaimed my independence and my dignity, but I was still healing from years of neglect and emotional abuse. As I continued to rebuild my life, I focused on finding peace and happiness within myself. I had emerged from the shadows of my past stronger and more resilient. My story was not one of revenge, but of emancipation, a testament to the strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Several months had passed since the court's decision, and the ripples of my actions were still felt. Adrian and Elizabeth, now estranged from most of their acquaintances, were living a shadow of their former lives. One day, I received an unexpected visit from Jack. He looked troubled, his usually bright eyes clouded with concern. Mom, I just came from seeing Dad and Grandma. He began, his voice heavy. They're not doing well. I offered him a seat and a warm cup of tea. Tell me what happened, Jack, I said. He sighed deeply before continuing. Dad's been let go from his job. His drinking has gotten worse, and Grandma, she's lost everything to gambling. They're selling the house. I listened, my heart aching for Jack. Despite everything, they were still his family. Mom, did we go too far? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Jack, we stood up for what's right. They made their choices, I replied, my voice tinged with sadness. The news of their misfortune didn't bring me joy. Instead, it was a somber reminder of the consequences of a life lived without integrity and respect for others. The following weeks were filled with whispers and rumors. Adrian and Elizabeth's house, once a symbol of their success, was now on the Adrianette. Their fall from grace was complete. I heard from a mutual acquaintance that Adrian had tried to find work, but his reputation preceded him. Elizabeth, meanwhile, had become a pariah in her social circles. Her gambling addiction was now public knowledge. One evening, while I was out for a walk, I saw Adrian. He was a shadow of the man he once was, his posture slumped, his eyes hollow. Our paths crossed, and for a moment, we stood there in silence. Ava, he began, his voice cracking. There's nothing to say, Adrian, I interrupted. You chose your path. He nodded slowly, a resigned look in his eyes. I never thought it would come to this, he murmured. As I walked away, leaving Adrian behind, I felt a sense of closure. The man who had once held so much power over me was now just a stranger with a broken past. Elizabeth, too, faded into obscurity. Her once lively demeanor was now subdued, the realities of her actions finally catching up to her. As the chapter of Adrian and Elizabeth closed, I realized that my journey was about more than revenge. It was about reclaiming my life and finding peace. I had stood up to my oppressors, not for vengeance, but for justice and self-respect. The experience had taught me the power of resilience and the importance of standing up for oneself. As I continued to build my new life, I embraced the lessons learned and looked forward to the future, free from the shadows of the past. With newfound strength and a heart ready to embrace the future, months turned into a year since the upheaval of my life began. In this time, my journey of self-reinvention continued, with each day bringing new strengths and realizations. The downfall of Adrian and Elizabeth was not my endgame. It was merely a byproduct of my pursuit for justice and respect. One crisp autumn afternoon, I sat in my cozy living room, the warm sunlight streaming through the window, reflecting on the changes. The phone rang, interrupting my thoughts. It was Jack. Mom, I wanted to tell you something, Jack said, his voice brimming with excitement. And Lo and I are getting married, and we'd love for you to help us with the planning. Joy surged through me. That's wonderful news, Jack. Of course, I'd love to help. Our conversation was filled with laughter and plans for the future, a stark contrast to the calls filled with distress and despair from the past. A few days later, while out for my regular walk, I encountered Elizabeth. She seemed smaller, diminished somehow. Our eyes met, and there was a brief flicker of something, regret, perhaps, or realization, in hers. Hava, she began, her voice quivering. I, I'm sorry. The apology, unexpected and late, caught me off guard. Elizabeth, your actions brought you here. I hope you find some peace. 
as I walked away, leaving Elizabeth standing alone. I realized the full extent of my transformation. I no longer harbored anger or resentment. I have moved beyond the need for revenge. The wedding planning with Jack and Aloan was a joyful affair. It was during these moments surrounded by love and hope that I truly appreciated the beauty of moving forward. The day of the wedding arrived, a beautiful ceremony filled with laughter and tears of joy. Watching Jack and Aloan so full of love and promise, I felt a sense of accomplishment. Despite the challenges, we had merged stronger. In my toast, I said, life brings many challenges, but it's how we face them that defines us. Today, we celebrate love, resilience, and new beginnings. As the evening drew to a close, I looked around at the happy faces, feeling content. I had not only survived, I had thrived. In the years that followed, Adrian and Elizabeth remained distant memories. I heard through the grapevine that they had moved away, each carrying their burdens. My life, once overshadowed by their presence, was now my own. I found fulfillment in my work, joy in my role as a mother and friend, and peace in my solitary moments. As I sat in my garden one sunny afternoon, watching the flowers bloom, I realized this was what true freedom felt like. My journey had been long and fraught with obstacles, but it led me to a place of contentment and strength. The end of my marriage was not the end of my story. It was the beginning of a new chapter, one where I was the author of my own life. In this new chapter, I found happiness, peace, and a sense of self that no one could ever take away. In conclusion, my journey has been a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the transformative power of self-discovery. From the shadows of a challenging past emerged a stronger, more empowered version of myself. The trials and tribulations, entreated by the downfall of those who once held sway over my life, paved the way for a brighter future filled with love, joy, and a newfound sense of freedom. I appreciate your time in following my narrative, and I hope my story has resonated with you in some way. If you enjoyed the journey, I appreciate you subscribing for more tales of triumph and transformation. Your support means the world to me, and I'm eager to hear your thoughts on the story. How is the narrative for you? Feel free to share your feedback, and thank you for being a part of this storytelling adventure.